And now, Freelance Heroism. Hey everybody, welcome to Freelance Heroism. My name is Dees. And I'm Rachel. And before we get started, we just want to say thank you to everyone out there who donates to the Patreon, in particular those who donate at the producer tier. Yes. Rachel, would you like <laughs> to let us know who they are? I would love to. We want to say thank you to Duncan, Crispy, Nate, Breakmeister, and Rebecca. Thank you so much, everyone. You guys help us make a better show. We couldn't do it without you. Uh, and actually, you help us make a better show for everyone. So, yeah. So thank you so much. Thank you. Rachel. Deez. You live in Maine, and I live in Georgia. It's true. And earlier today, you <laughs> sent a photo yeah. uh, of what I can only describe as kitschy what the fuck <laughs> it was hold on let me just i want just so i can keep it fresh in my memory yeah uh it is a picture of what looks to be some sort of pelican some rodent holding berries in a suggestive way a <laughs> duck a turtle uh-huh. another like larger pelican i guess or <laughs> heron bird uh-huh. And I don't like some sort of carp or <laughs> awkward bone fish. I don't know mm-hmm. what the hell that thing is. Yeah. It's like a wood sculpture. Yeah. Uh, it's actually, it's g- quite big. Um, do you know where that was, where I took it? Where that was on display at? I don't know where. The grocery store. <laughs> right. Right. Um, I So I saw that coming out of the grocery store and I just took a quick picture and sent it to the freelance chat. Um, and you commented on how it is very main. Yeah, hashtag just main shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would agree with that. Your state is a strange one. Uh, <laughs> I'm not claiming. I'm not claiming that the state that I currently live in is is better. Uh huh. Not because we both have our weirdnesses. That's true. Uh, but I will say, the people in your state have eyes that are very far apart <laughs> and weird shaped bodies. <laughs> They, they all look like they were either smushed or stretched. There's like a, a like a like a like a like a, if they were made of play doh and you just kind of work them. <laughs> there is a little bit of an Innsmouth vibe uh, that I I pick up from having lived here in Maine. Um, they look like if if you made a cookie person like a like a Pillsbury <laughs> Doughboy and you put your thumb between the eyes and pushed. Oh so no! So they kind of like squish a little, not so far that it's like, huh, uh-huh. but like enough that where you, you like double take. There's right. A of, there's a lot of far apart kind of trout trout heads at the grocery store. <laughs> well, I think Maine is a very uh I don't know. It it does feel like a strange place. I haven't lived in a lot of places in my life, but Maine does feel just a little off. It, I I'll, I've joked for ever since moving up here that Maine feels like it's about 30 years in the past. Um they got a real I dropped my Mr. Potato Head vibe. That's what I'm saying. Like it's a little it's not wrong, but it's a little off. You know? Uh-huh. Um <laughs> Is I'm there just... a is there a sort of look in Georgia that you would you would Old people describe? wear their their pants so that the belt buckles are up near their nipples. <laughs> Old men here wear their pants so high that if they cough, you can hear their belt. <laughs> it is ridiculous. That's I. I don't know why you would need to wear your belt that high. They're crazy. Your it's pants like, that high. They they tighten their belt around their rib cage. It's <laughs> crazy how high these people wear their pants. Uh, all the old people gather at like fast food restaurants in the mornings, like real early. Uh huh. They'll just kind of swarm those places, and uh, it's just weird. It's like a flock of old people. <laughs> um, they have a thing here um, where the places will have, like, community houses and, like, churches and stuff will advertise these things called bean suppers, where it's legit specifically, like, beans just beans it's a be- I, I don't know if there's anything else but beans are there a better large be it's not a it. supper if it's just beans like a bowl of beans everyone <laughs> gets around and eats a bowl of beans i don't know but it's so it's never like a community dinner or like the church is gonna have a big potluck for everybody it's specifically like it's always called a bean supper 
That's terrible. That sounds fucking terrible. Yeah, so I don't know. They're they're big on beans up here. Yeah, that's a weird um <laughs> That's a weird weird thing. Yeah. Georgia is kind of we're different, but mm -hmm. I'm not saying better, just different. Yeah. We have a different series of weirdnesses here. Uh people really like uh lighthouses up here. There's a lot of lighthouse like iconography. <laughs> Yeah, they put they put chickens on everything here, like in the kitchen and shit. Oh yeah. Old women really like that. <laughs> um I'm trying to think. You name something weird up there and I'll tell you the analog for here. Um a lot of places still accept checks. <laughs> I think everywhere still accepts checks. D really? Mm -hmm. I feel like it wasn't as much of a thing, or at least oh. not as many people use checks. Like oh, when yeah, I nobody, look at Texas, nobody uses them, but they still accept them. They're oh, a I, form of currency. We so. uh, we still get like a lot of the the library. A lot of people will write out checks. Oh. <laughs> that's yeah, but that's an old that's an old person library thing. They <laughs> probably do that here too. Uh, let's see. I would the grocery stores close really early. Um, when I lived in Texas, I lived a couple blocks away from a grocery store, and that store was open until like one in the morning, which felt normal to me. Um, but up here, the grocery store closes at like eight or nine o'clock. Uh, at here, you can't in Georgia, you can't buy anything on Sunday before a certain time. You can't buy anything? Not anything that's not directly related to medicine or food. Wow. Yeah. So if you need aspirin, Mm -hmm. Or you need, I don't know, cake mix. That's fine. But if you need a t-shirt, that's illegal to buy. What? <laughs> Swear to God. Oh my God, that's Sunday. weird. Yeah, they ha that happens all the time. Also, uh, you can't buy liquor on Sundays at all. At all? At all. Wow. Yeah. That is very strange. Yep. Also, we have uh, one store here in... Grovetown, Georgia, <laughs> that has been every brand of building ever. Do you guys have any of those? <laughs> that that started out as like a Domino's pizza, then became a movie rental place, mm -hmm. and then became a different movie rental place, but without the branding. Right. Then became a Subway. Uh -huh. uh, then it became a party supply store. Then it became a, a cricket cell phone store. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's in constant state of flux. Mm -hmm. uh, it can't decide what business it wants to be. Uh, <laughs> And then there's a restaurant up the road from my house mm -hmm. uh, that has been every type of restaurant ever. Uh, right now, I think it's currently a fish place, but uh -huh. that's on the way out already. I can tell oh, you. No. <laughs> but it, it was it was a burger place first, and then that they made burgers real bad, so they <laughs> closed down. <laughs> and then it was like a cheesesteak place, but the cheesesteak meat tasted like cat food. <laughs> so, oh no! <laughs> so they got rid of that. Then it was a wing place for a while, but they never learned how to cook wings, so they're always raw. <laughs> oh. so that, it's been like everything. It's a, It was a seafood place. I think it's still a seafood place, but it's a different one than it was before. <laughs> uh, actually, speaking of seafood places, so Maine is often known for lobster. Mm -hmm. um, so Red Lobster tried to open up a franchise in Maine, and it failed miserably. Yeah, because why the fuck would you want bad <laughs> seafood when <laughs> everywhere else has good seafood? I don't know. I there's a especially as you get closer to the coast, there are tons of these little lobster shacks that yeah. you can get lobster like really fresh lobster rolls at. Um, so That's gross. I, I hate <laughs> I hate seafood so much. So red lobster trying up here seems I don't know like a bad yeah. idea. You have no Mexican food up there. No, not really. It's you have an attempt. You have yeah. some some swing and a miss attempts, but mm -hmm. it's not not real Mexican food. I desperately miss uh, real Mexican food or Tex Mex. Well, we were just so looking bad. for any American <laughs> Mexican place that had mm -hmm. queso that wasn't yellow. <laughs> that was a hard experience. I was like, what? In the fu I mean, look, the one place that we went to had good queso. It, well, not it wasn't queso, but it was something yeah. else. The cheese dip. It was something like that. It was yellow. Yeah. yeah. But it was good. Mm -hmm. But all the other ones, not so much. 
Yeah. Uh, the other ones were a little like we melted some graph singles on the top. <laughs> yeah, that was that was off putting. Yeah. We went to a Walmart just to see if there was a, a <laughs> you know, they shipped it from out of state. Mm-hmm. Nope. nope. Too many white people per square inch. They didn't even think. <laughs> they were like, hey, no one's going to ask for this. Yeah. Can you find peppers when you want? Or do you just have to? No. You have to order them online and get them delivered? <laughs> I can get uh, bell peppers mm-hmm. pretty reliably, but anything beyond that. It's, Oof. it's, yeah. I was uh, so excited the other day at the grocery store because they were selling these bags and it looked like bell peppers mixed with other peppers. Yeah. And I was so excited and I was like, I'm going to get this. I'm going to have peppers. I'm so happy. It was all bell peppers. <laughs> they were just bell, like fully grown bell peppers and then not fully grown bell peppers. So they they Ugh. looked like a different type of pepper. Um, but it was all just bell pepper, and I was, I was I sad. Lo- and now I'm like, I have to force bell peppers into every meal I make for the next week, so these don't go bad. I looked through your through your seasoning aisle. Uh-huh. It's like where they put like, like major conglomerates make these fucking seasonings, right? Yeah, yeah. And like the majority of them were salt. <laughs> it was like salt, garlic, mm-hmm. and like. Couldn't find paprika to save my ass. Cumin was gone. <laughs> it did not exist. I was like, what is going on at this place? Mm-hmm. It was it was really weird. There were a, a whole bunch of like boiled and stewed. Boiled dinner is a big thing here. Ugh. Yeah. Good Lord. Uh, I remember uh, we were grocery shopping and we went through the like ethnic food aisle after we went through it, you turned to me and you said, where's the ethnic food aisle? And I was like, we just walked through this. <laughs> Unfucking believable <laughs> Yeah, you guys' meat section was pretty weird, too. Mm-hmm. It was just a lot of, like, fish and, yeah. like, sea spiders. <laughs> like, different varieties of sea bugs. Yes. <laughs> and I was just like, uh, where's the... Where's the like steaks? <laughs> we finally we finally found them, but yeah. it was it was limited. Mm-hmm. Uh, where whereas here it's like all steaks and no seafood at all anywhere. Uh-huh. Yeah, but you don't you don't see seafood here. Wow! Like I could go to almost any grocery store in the area and find forty or fifty different types of good steak, mm-hmm. and not a single fucking crab or <laughs> some. Sometimes they'll have them, but they'll be, like, frozen in a bag, and they look like they've iced over completely. Oh, yeah. 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 They've been in there for two years. No one's ever thought to look. Oh, no. Yeah. Ugh. Oh. <sighs> yeah, it's, it's weird up there, for sure. I mean, it's weird down here, too, but mm-hmm. but where you're from is weirder, I think. I I feel like I've fallen into, like, a slightly different reality from the rest of the country living up here. Yeah. Well, you're about, in all fairness, 40 years younger than the average person. That Maine is a very old... St- actually, I think, like, the average age is, like, the oldest in the entire country. You might have got in at the exact right point. Yeah. And, like, hear, me, hear me out here, right? Because uh-huh. right now, every all the houses are real expensive. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. Trying to buy a house is real expensive. Yeah. But since your state skew is super old, uh-huh. you only have like 10, 15 <laughs> years until the prices come down hard. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're like one really bad cold snap away oh, no. from just some really <laughs> affordable three bedroom houses. You know? Right. <laughs> so maybe look on the bright side. You just yeah. hang in there for a little bit and you're going to make a killing. Get I would my, buy four or five of them. Shot. Get my flu oh, shot. Just, <laughs> I, I mean, I think you're probably going to be all right. Yeah. I think you're going to be all right. I, yeah. I think some of the other people I saw up there are just, they're, <laughs> they're already pushing daisies. Oh, no. They just haven't been. Once they, once they go from upright to sideways, they're going to, you know, <laughs> and they ain't getting back up is all oh. I'm saying. All yeah. right. Well, maybe we <sighs> should, uh, maybe we should go to this week's episode. Yep. All right. So this is Candy hard edited. <laughs> we hard edited that chunk out. Okay, go ahead. This is Candlekeepers, chapter 15. 
What's an episode title? We don't do episode titles for Candle Keepers. Man. That's rough. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, what, sh what should the episode title be? Uh, Theodore. <laughs> this episode, this episode, and this episode alone will be called Theodore. Or Theodore. Teddy for Teddy for short. Okay. <laughs> to the episode. Hit it, Teddy. <laughs> Madam of Fire, are you there? Well met, dearest one. How do you feel today? She called me dearest again. <laughs> <laughs> he looks at it. If I were sad and feel that life was passing me by, how would you lead? If rest, relaxation, or transformation is what you need, then follow the lilies, dearest one. I'm sure Sil Silveri will see to your needs. The mirror then glows, and a five-foot-wide, seven-foot-high portal appears at the end of the, the hallway, or the end of the the uh, bookshelves. Um, I'm going to draw see... my weapon. <laughs> uh, you can see through this um, portal, it looks like uh, it leads into a um, into like the woods. Um, there's a trail that you can see that's marked by posts um, that resemble sculpted stone lilies. So my... So, uh, yeah, go for it. I'm going to grab him by the collar. What? Let's go. I'm going to well, push wait, him wait. towards the portal. Well, wait, I as I'm kind of getting pushed, um, is my uh, great axe of detecting scary stuff like screaming at me right now? No. Okay, it's not scary, so... Uh, okay, and I just kind of allow myself to get pushed through the door. I'm going to turn, right. and I'm going to point my sword at the angel, and I'm like, you too, and then I'm going to activate it so it catches on fire. <laughs> <laughs> With me, and I'm going to step through the portal. He shrugs. Oh, I'm going to miss another meeting. <laughs> Well, she says the lilies will make me happy. All right. So the three of you walk through the portal. Um, <laughs> hold, on, hold on. Sorry. Okay. Before the portal closes, I like to imagine, like, from the other side, you just hear, like, some muttering. And it's like, perhaps you just read the books about the whores. Maybe that would make you feel better. <laughs> <laughs> And the three of you find yourselves in a woodland area on a trail, um, and there are indeed posts uh, sculpted to resemble lilies um, marked along the trail. So she said we're supposed to follow the lilies, and I guess that means we go down the road? I'm going to... I hope this leads better than the golden brick road. I'm going to smell the air. Is it the same scent that I got from the book? Um, there is definitely a floral scent on the air. Do I still have the book? Did you keep it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Wow. I, I just didn't know out. if the book could. I didn't know if the book could go <laughs> through the portal with us. Yeah. It stayed behind last time, so. I'm assuming it stayed behind last time. Or so. Balthrax didn't bring it with them. True. Mm. Maybe he didn't want to get it wet when he was canoeing. <laughs> <laughs> Dear God. <laughs> oh. All right. What is the uh, marching order? Balthrax, it'll make your dick stop oozing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Edit. Ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll go first. Okay. Uh, I, I will go second. All right. I will stay safe in the back. Okay. So the trail uh, heads roughly north. Um, and after a few minutes, 
um, the woods sort of clear and ahead of you, you can see um, a large building. It is made of stone and wood. Uh, there's a set of double doors that the um, the trail leads directly to. There are some like uh, windows in it as well. You can see um, it is during the day, so you can kind of see in. It looks, um, it doesn't look abandoned or anything like that. Hmm. I'm gonna push open the double doors. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm gonna double... hold my sword in front of me like a torch. Okay. Uh, the double doors open to the sound of a bell. Beyond the doors is a large lobby, the air heavy with the scent of fresh lilies. A desk stands in the center of the room, holding neatly piled papers and fresh-cut lilies in a vase. A dark-haired man in fine clothes stands up from behind the desk as he sees you. Welcome, friends, to the restful lily. Freshen yourselves in our luxurious bathhouse. Or perhaps you'd enjoy a massage, haircut, a shave or pedicure. Oh, road-tired feet simply cry out for comfort. Whatever your pleasure, I am here to serve. We look for a dwarf. A dwarf? Short. Uh, I don't think we have any dwarves on staff. Not on staff. He came here recently. His name is Falthrax, and he likes to... He, he puts books away in the library. Well, I can't really give out information about any of our customers, but if you're here as guests, you're certainly welcome to look around. We have a number of services here. And he'll take like a little brochure that you can see has like like uh, services and how much they cost written on it. Hmm. So uh, I, I take one. I start looking and I look over at Mr. D'Angelo. Like, I, I, I can't get a haircut. I don't have hair. I, 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 don't, I don't have any beard either so i can't shave what, what am i supposed to do here and anyone who touches my hair will lose their head <laughs> noted um looking mm. over the um the brochure yonk uh he'll he'll give each of you a, a brochure as well um entry to the bathhouse costs five gold per person and includes the use of the enchanted baths a comfortable robe and a private changing room with a lockable trunk to store weapons and equipment Lodging for visitors who want to stay overnight at the temple are available at the cost of four gold per person. Meals cost five silver, and the lounge offers a wide range of beverages. Uh, you can enjoy a haircut, shave, or a waxing for two gold, one gold, or ten gold, respectively. Massages can be booked for twenty gold and last for an hour. Uh, and a manicure and pedicure cost two silver, although there is a little asterisk that says... Uh, the pedicure may incur an additional fee depending on the cleanliness of the customer's feet. So, uh, you gentlemen interested in any of the services here at the Temple of the Restful Lily? No, but we have to get inside. <laughs> I'll turn so... off the fire on the sword. <laughs> Thank you. So, some of these things kind of sound nice, Mr. D'Angelo. I I actually feel slight excite, ins, excitement inside for this place. It, oh. It's odd. I, I I don't know how this to react. And we did just get paid, so we we do have money we could spend. We will take three entries. That is true. And okay. we will decide on further services later. Excellent. So you want the uh the bathhouse? Yes. Uh, will you be staying? Yes. We, we should have a few more rooms available. We do have some some guests here at the, at the moment. All right. Um, okay, so I will uh, book you for the bathhouse and uh, three rooms. Um, if you choose to have a meal, you can do that in the, the dining room and pay there. Um, massages can be booked uh with I'm gonna just take the pamphlet from them and be like <laughs> we will figure it out thank you uh, thank thank you thank you uh so it'll be let's see uh 27 gold i'll just put it on the table excellent thank you very much um he'll gesture behind him you can see there's sort of a 
long hallway with like lined with changing rooms on the sides and then double doors at the end. Um, he'll say that's to the bathhouse. He'll gesture to his right and he'll say the gardens are in that way if you wish for some exercise. Um, and then here to my left uh, is the dining room. And here are your keys to your private rooms. Those are through the dining room. Um, if you have any questions, just ask me or any of the, the staff here. And welcome to the Temple of the Restful Lily. And what was the name of this person? Do you ask him his name? Yes. He never, he never gave it. Oh, okay. Oh, and what is your name? My to name's... know who to ask for? Safe. Safe? Yes. Okay. I'm just going to walk in to the other room. <laughs> okay. Are you going to the the bath, the garden, or the dining room? What's in the directly in front of us area? Um, If you're facing him, then going forward, you would walk towards the bath. Bath. Done. Just okay. walking straight in. All right. Uh, so there is a corridor beyond the lobby that runs between two rows of curtain cubicles. Uh, where guests can change out of traveling clothes and armor. Each cubicle contains a wooden stool, two white robes hanging on hooks, and a large wooden trunk with the lock. Uh, and Seth will say, if you you can just uh, set your, your armor and, and such in the trunks, they shall have a key so you can lock it, keep your key with yourself before you uh, head into the, the bathhouse. I'll put the I can put the armor in mm. and put on one of the robes, but I'm keeping the sword with me. Okay. <laughs> um Yonk will go into one of the changing rooms. Um mm. are the robes big enough for him? Yeah, the robes. So there's like a robe for like small. Um oh, okay. And then like a robe for medium sized creatures. Okay. So he'll he I Wow, I've never worn a robe before. This is soft. It's very soft. Mm, okay. Well, I'm. Mm. Here he got. It's made from real foul tricks. <laughs> <laughs> foul tricks, whatever. Uh, um, he'll 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 take off his uh his outfit and he will put on one of the robes because he thinks that's what he's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Um. And he'll kind of sheepishly like come back out of the cubicle and look down one way of the hallway, look down the other way of the hallway. Mr. D'Angelo. Mr. D'Angelo. Where Yes. Where 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 do we go now? I changed my clothes, sort of. Uh, Did D'Angelo get changed? I assume he was yeah. in the cubicle. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, it's, it's, it seems that's what we're going to. If um if you continue down the hallway, there's a set of double doors, and you're told that leads to the the bathhouse. I don't think I've ever seen you wear something white before, Mister D'Angelo. I know. I just lit the beacons of Condor. See, <laughs> <laughs> D'Angelo's blindingly white legs poking out from under the robe. <laughs> I mean, the worst part is I'm a fallen Azimar, so I'm already extra pale. <laughs> yeah. His, his tattoos of his favorite My Chemical Romance <laughs> lyrics are oh. showing. <laughs> uh, I, uh, Yonk will make his way down, I yep. guess, to find out what, what is in a bathhouse. All right. Yep. Uh, so you go to the double doors. Uh, who is opening them? I'll push them open. Okay. Um, a floor of polished white marble surrounds a large central pool of steaming turquoise water in this large open-air bath. Stone pillars stand along the outside wall, sculpted with relief carvings of Sunni. Between the pillars, frosted windows diffuse the light from outside through the mist that hangs in the air. Um, you can see at the deepest, the pool is 10 feet deep. Is there anyone here? Uh, let's see. Uh-oh. <laughs> Roll for initiative! <laughs> oh my god, it's a sword fight. No one's wielding weapons. <laughs> Except for that guy. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, we'll say there is one person. Um, it is a 
drow male. He has an eye patch and a big kind of floppy hat. Uh oh. And he is in the the water. I'm gonna walk immediately to him. <laughs> he'll, he'll nod up to you. We're looking for a dwarf. Don't usually run with dwarves. Have you seen one here lately? I just, I got here yesterday. No. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Is uh, the water hotter? Is the water hot or cold? Steam. I dip my toe hot. into the water. Um, This seems to be like a, uh, it's hot. It's not like painful or anything. It's like a hot spring. Alright. Alright, I'm gonna it's take my take my robe and throw it on the floor <laughs> and just walk into the water and hold my sword over my shoulders so I can rest my hands on it. Okay. <laughs> wow, I didn't think we'd get to go swimming today, Mr. D'Angelo. I immediately go to one end of the pillow, it's the deepest in, and I cannonball in. <laughs> in the robes? In the robes, because I don't know any different. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Roll for drowning. <laughs> Can you swim? Uh, that's a good question. Oh. Can I swim? Well, I mean, you'll figure it out. Yes. <laughs> that's I, can how definitely, most learn. I can definitely tread water. I know that much. Um, I, I would say that, yes, I can swim. Okay. Uh, I... I don't swim well. I doggy paddle, but you know, I don't. I don't immediately drown. Okay, all right. But yeah, um, I immediately yeah. kind of float over onto my back, and I just start like kicking, like paddle wheel style, <laughs> and I'm having a, the time of my life. All right, uh, the drow's just sort of hanging out, relaxing in the the water. It is it is pleasantly warm. Um, what so. color is this big floppy hat? Uh, let's see. She's looking at the photo. That means purple. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, I know. yeah. It's purple. Out of game, I had a rough idea who it was too. <laughs> yeah. I just, I'm thinking, is he wearing it? I mean, this is an indoor pool, right? Yeah. It's a yeah bathhouse, like a sauna. Right, mm -hmm. but uh, I was just thinking, what is he wearing it to block out the sun coming through the windows? Or nah, man, when you have a cool hat, it doesn't come off your head. You keep it on all the time. Even in the pool. Okay. Yeah, man. Even in the pool. You're not going underwater. You're not swimming. You're there to relax. Well, Yonk, Yonk is, but Yonk doesn't Yonk know any better. So. <laughs> I, I think, yeah. Yonk's going to come over later and be like, can I have money for the vending machine? You have 500 gold. <laughs> can I get another snow cone? Can I get another snow cone? Why are you asking? You're an adult. <laughs> you dropped your last snow cone in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> he cannonballed with it and it melted. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, it's like those raccoons where they dunk their food and it disappears. Oh no, those are so sad. <laughs> they get cotton candy and they put it in the water. It just goes. And like, ah. So sad. I, that they do, I like... watch those videos all the time. <laughs> like, the funniest shit in the world. Uh. So, uh, this is your first time at the the temple. It is mine. I don't, this is cool. Is this your first time here? It is, yeah. Did you come through a book too? No. Well, we 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 kind of came through a book. We we talked to the lady in the book, and then she opened a door for us, and then we got to come here. Really? Yeah. How did you get here? Well, I was um, I was in Silvery Moon, and I heard about this place, and it's not far. Oh, I piqued my attention. So we are still in Faerun, then. Yeah, we're south of Silvery Moon. Hmm. Um, D'Angelo, you know Silvery Moon is hundreds, if not thousands, of miles from Candlekeep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, so you're saying we took a trip, Mr. D'Angelo? And it wasn't on a rocket ship. Cool. It's a rocket ship. <laughs> he shakes his head. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this this is almost like going on vacation. I haven't had to get, uh, I haven't gotten to take one of those in forever. 
This Avon Moore is always denying my requests. I think it's funny that Rachel was like, you can have one green item and one blue item. <laughs> and the first thing that happened is I left my horse from my Cavalier background <laughs> back at the fucking thing thousands of miles away. <laughs> I had to take off my armor immediately. Yeah. Uh, and I don't give a shit what anyone in this place says. That's sort of coming with me. <laughs> Mr. Chumba, you can't bring a horse in the pool, though. Why not? Well, I, I, I mean, I didn't see a sign. Can, can horses I'll bring swim? my horse. Where, I didn't have a choice, so he's not here. But <laughs> if I did, he could be. <laughs> I remove my bathrobe and get in and just sit in the shallow end. Okay. Hmm. Uh, the water is very soothing. Hmm. We must find this dwarf. I and then figure out how to get all the way back. Well, I said he'd been here for a day and he hadn't seen him. Well, we don't know how long ago... Or, Well, actually, that's a good question. Do we know exactly the amount of time it's been since anyone has seen... Falthrax? Uh, Laura said it had been a few days. A few days, so oh. three to five. So he may have arrived, assuming time is linear, he may have arrived here prior to our our drow friend here. The other side is he may not have followed the Lily Stones, but we hope he did. Well, the book told us to. I would think he would follow the directions if he found himself here but maybe not the book so, brought him peace and then it it the peace didn't last so you've got a magic book yeah we work at a, we work at a library and you have you heard of candle keep that's that's where mr d'angelo and i we we work and and this is our friend this is kumba and he's a king or he's going to be a king we're trying to figure king. that out well He's here. To, he came to the library to find books to figure out how to 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 make his kingdom work and and things and mm. um and then I'm gonna look at the guy told, in the hat and go, usurper. Ah, yeah, yeah. And it then happens. our boss told us we had to come here and and, and find our, our 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 friend Falthrax, who also works at the library, and he had this book. Um, mm. And he talked to the book, and the book talked back to him because there's a lady in the book, and the lady in the book said that if you didn't feel good about yourself, that she would help you. And then a door appeared, and we walked through the door, and now I'm getting to swim, and this is so cool. Excellent. Well, uh, my name is Joel Axel Bainry. Very nice to meet you. Part of you. Have you? Hmm. Uh, out of character, has mm. uh, Kyumba met Drill Axel before? No. Okay. No, but I mean, like, he's kind of a big deal. Mm. <laughs> Works for a lot of people. Yeah. Out of character. Can I roll a history check if I know him? Sure. I, I mean, you, you've heard of him. You've heard of Drill yeah, but... and you've heard of him. Mm. Oh, shit. What'd you yeah, get? Yeah, I've heard of him. Okay. 20. <laughs> All right. Yes, you have waste those roles, man. You've definitely heard of yeah. him. Would would there be? I don't know that there would necessarily be children's books about Charles Axel being that he's a mercenary. There would definitely be children's books about Dritz. Um, and oh, so okay. So by proxy, have, maybe. Yeah, Charles Axel mm. may have been mentioned in in mm. a few of them. I think he was mentioned in those draw books that are stuck in my section. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a striking similarity between uh, uh him and some of the some of the covers of the books yeah. in your section. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> We've rested long enough. Oh well I'm uh, walk out of the water and put my robe back on. Good luck with your with your search. We'll find him. We we get we have to go, don't we? Yes, Yonk. You okay. need to go get your other rope. You're soaked. You're going to leave a mess everywhere. Oh, was I supposed to take this? Oh, oops. It's okay. Okay, I'll go I'll, uh, I'll go get the other rope, and I just take the rope off and I <laughs> throw it on the ground. It slotches. <laughs> and I just, you just hear splash, 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 splash as I go back towards the hallway and go through the door. 
As um as the three of you come out of the pool, uh, you do notice that um your skin or your scales or your fur uh appears healthier and younger. Um, any sort of scars or burns that you had, it seems like they've faded a bit. Oh, not going back in here again. Yeah. Oh. Uh-huh. couple of minutes pass and you see Yonk come back through the door in a robe that is way too small for him <laughs> because it was oh, the only the other one robe. available in the cubicle. He's got the Picard robe with the little short thighs. <laughs> it basically comes to about here and, and there's a cord tied across his midsection that is hanging on for dear life. Hold on. And he's it's it's oh. it's it's very much fat guy in a little coat territory that we're in here. <laughs> the like arm sleeves are just completely split when he had split, to... yeah. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me find this Picard robe. Oh. <laughs> this shit is so fucking funny. Every time I see him, he wears it all the fucking time. You guys That's know what the, I'm talking about? It's the purple yeah. one, right? Am uh, I thinking of Oh, oh yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Charlie Picard is a non-binary fashion icon. Uh, <laughs> look at this guy. That look, is, look at this guy. That is, that is confidence. Yeah, uh, that dude been, his, this dude has been rocking ships for so long. Hold on. <laughs> By the way, that is uh, not that is not a fucking Picard robe. <laughs> uh, look at that guy. <laughs> Oh, oh, girl! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! You'll see. Uh, Jarlaxle will get out of the 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 bath as well, and he's he's drying off before he puts his robe back on. It heals the scars on the outside, but leaves alone the scars on the end. He looks at you, and then he looks at the other two. He's like, "I just met him today." He, he nods. He's like, that's uh, how it goes sometimes. Mr. D'Angelo's he's sad. But he's working on it. Hmm. Well, uh, maybe you should talk to some of the some of the owners here. Well I feel like in this giant pool that we were just sitting in, there's like <laughs> an anglerfish bobber with a light on it. Just <laughs> that's the energy I'm getting from this place. <laughs> The pool is a mimic. The pool is a mimic. <laughs> yeah, that's why the scars are gone. It's been digesting us slowly. Yeah, it's like Aww. those little. It's like those little fish that when you go get a pedicure done, the fish kind of eat the dead skin off your feet. Oh god, uh, I don't know yeah. how anyone does that. Yeah, they have like uh, like pedicure places where yeah. there's like little pools, and you put your feet in the pool, and the fish there's like tiny little fish, and they like nibble the dead skin off of your your feet. Mm-hmm. Yes. My mom apparently has started taking my dad to one of those, and she says it's the funniest <laughs> thing because my dad has a horrible like tickle reflex, and so all he does while he sits there with his feet in the pool is giggle his ass off. Like a little girl. <laughs> Man, I would kick those fish out of that pool so quick. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So um, everyone's getting out of the the bath now, going back to your. Um, your uh, little uh, changing rooms to get your 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 gear back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. I can't wait to see if I have to pay for the shredded robe. <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to get dinged for that. So, um, back in the sort of changing room lobby area. Uh, if you're not going back to the bathhouse or going outside, you can either go to the gardens or go to the dining room. Gardens first, and then we'll hit up the dining room because I'll be hungry by that point. Okay. All right. Cool to you guys. That's fun. Young's hungry all the time, but yeah, that's... <laughs> My young is hungry all the time. <laughs> Um, An iron fence overgrown with ivy surrounds a small garden. An earthen path weaves between a scattering of trees, flower bushes, and stone benches. Various iron weights, wooden poles, and heavy sacks are strewn about the place. Um, 
also here you can see that there is there are a few people here um you see two halfling women um who are sort of doing like exercises and kind of um like encouraging them on uh you can see a uh female Did we just walk in on a spin class <laughs> It's yoga time. High elf. Uh, uh, you can see an athletic sun elf with copper hair. Um, she wears an ornate breastplate with a red fur mantle, um, and she's like sort of leading these two halfling women into like I don't know, just a, an exercise routine, basically. How how big is the garden? Uh, it is. Um, about 35 by 50. Okay. Um, okay. the bathhouse was a little bigger than the garden. Okay. Just to give you an yeah. idea of, of sort of scale. Hmm. I'm going to, uh, walk up to them. I'm in the armor again. Okay. Okay. Just to clarify. <laughs> We're looking for a dwarf. Who are you speaking to? All of them. Okay. Uh, the two halfling women look like they are way too out of breath to answer you. The elf is like, come on, just a couple more. You can do it. You're not weak. I know. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking for a dwarf. These are halflings. Have you seen a dwarf? Not recently. Are you, uh, you, did you just, uh, you and your friends are, are just came to the temple? Yeah, yes. we, we, we just got here today and we already went swimming and now this, this looks like where we would have recess. Excellent. Is that what you're doing? Uh, well, my name is Azirsa. I am one of the, the owners here at the temple of the Restful Lily. Eat. Your pool is awesome, by the way. That was so much fun. Thank you. But, but yeah, we we we're we're like uh um this uh my my name is Young. Nice to meet you. And, and and this is my coworker, Mr. D'Angelo, and Hi. this is our new friend. This is King Kumba. Um, and I do another little curtsy bow thing <laughs> because I think that's what I'm supposed to do every time I address him. I'm, and, I'm getting used to it at this point. If you stop doing it, I'm really upset. <laughs> and 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 like he said, we came here looking for our friend. He he's a dwarf. He works at the library where we work, and his name's Falthrax. And he was very sad. And we think he came here to get happy again. Hmm. Um. Plenty of sad people come here to uh, take in the healing properties of the the bathhouse here. Uh, she'll look over at D'Angelo. She'll be like, hey, you look like you don't work out much. Hey, fuck Is you. it that obvious? <laughs> it is. You want to, uh, why don't you, why don't you step up here? Well, I can run you through, um, through a few routines. We can get an idea of sort of how unathletic you are. Um, the fucking race. how <laughs> unathletic? <laughs> yeah, Susan Powder needs to back the fuck off. We can get a, we can get a scale. <laughs> uh, it's something you could work on while you're here. Uh, I'm working on finding a dwarf. You said it's been a few days. A few days of what? How long is it since you've seen a dwarf? I haven't seen a dwarf in a while, but we get, like I said, we get plenty of guests here. But I think you're deflecting because you are afraid I'm that you're going to deflecting. fail. <laughs> I am going to fail. <laughs> Tell you what, if you can complete three activities of my choosing and successfully complete them, I'll give you a potion. Potion of what? You have to... A potion of fine dwarf? Because otherwise, you're going to fuck <laughs> <laughs> All right. My, my therapist looking. says I should try new things. Excellent. All right. This is going to so, hurt. Can, can I play too? Please. Sure. 
Awesome. <laughs> All right. First activity, squats. Uh, she's going to... Why would you inflict that upon yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Well, there, there's lots of books in my section that, that always talk about exercise and how good it is for you, especially when you're young. And it's got like, like all kinds. So, so we're supposed to like bend down and then get back up. And this is supposed to be really good for our legs, Mr. D'Angelo. And I all just right. start doing it. I don't even wait for a count. <laughs> I just start, I just start doing okay. squats for, because you know, first, first set of squats. Uh, anyone that's doing this, give me a constitution check. Oh, okay. okay. That's that's better than the athletics role is afraid of. <laughs> Natural 20! Hey. I squat the fuck out of this exercise. <laughs> oh, 22. 13. 13, okay. Young uh, is a squatting motherfucker. Uh, Kiumba? 22. Okay. All right. So you both, uh, you all pass the first set. Second set of squats. Oh Give me constitution checks. Oh, sweet mother of God. Not quite as good. 14. I'm already oh, feeling the fatigue. I nine. overdid it. <laughs> 21. Okay. All right. So, uh, D'Angelo, you struggle through this. So, for the third check, you're going to roll a disadvantage. Oh. So, I need a third and final constitution check from the three of you. Uh, same thing again. 14. 14. 16. I have plateaued. Okay. My first roll is a... An eight total, and okay. my second roll is a fifteen. All right. Uh, uh so D'Angelo, you are unable to complete the final set of squats. Uh, you sort of collapse on the ground. Um, you are going to need to finish a short or long rest before you could attempt this again. I am completely out of breath, gasping for air on the ground. All right. She kind of looks down at you and shakes her head. She's like, get up. We're not done. I'm just breathing, you know. You never know when that luxury will end. Get up. Tug of war is next. Did I pass? Yes, you passed. I swear you hate me. <laughs> We're doing three sets of activities. Uh, Each activity has three. I'm getting a new therapist. <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> All right. D'Angelo was only here to fix his mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Uh, so I'm sure it'll matter, not soon. The tug of war, uh, she takes the three of you over to um, one of the trees, sort of in the center of the garden. Um, she has like a rope already looped around um like one of the branches like a low branch of the tree she's gonna aggressively kind of toss the rope over to d'angelo like catch <laughs> she'll throw the rope at him ready he tried yes all right give me an athletics check oh fuck you're gonna pull the tree down <laughs> uh as you start to pull the Thanks. rope d'angelo <laughs> you see the the tree like the lip the the branches of the tree move like arms and it starts pulling the rope back. Uh, you got a six? Yeah. Okay. Boy, you're about to get whipped around like fucking... You... It's going to be one bad Harry Potter remake right now. <laughs> you immediately <laughs> fall prone and take two bludgeoning damage from how, like, aggressively the tree pulls you. Ow! Uh... Uh... uh are you okay, Mr. D'Angelo? I go over to help pick him up. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. No. Uh, Azirsa pulls the rope out of your hands, and she's like, who's next? Me. Me. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. She I'll throws it. the I'll rope over to you, Yonk. All right. Give uh, me an athletics check. 17. Okay. After, um, it gets pretty close a couple of times if you, like, playing tug of war with this tree uh but you are able to wretch the uh the rope out of its branches nice uh and kiamba she will toss the rope over to you and then toss the other half of the rope back to the tree she's I'll like wrap ready it around my wrist all right give me an athletics check oh come on nine nine uh 
Unfortunately, the tree pulls the rope out of your paws uh, pretty violently, and you take one bludgeoning damage. Ha! Ah! Tree cheated. Trees don't cheat. All right. Final challenge. Chain skipping. She points at D'Angelo. Get up! Why? <laughs> D'Angelo slowly gets to his feet. Come on, so Mr. D'Angelo, you can do it. She takes a length of chain. She tosses one end of it to the tree. The tree catches it. She has the other end. D'Angelo, give me a uh, acrobatics check. This is you attempting to stay on your feet while jumping over the chain as it's like... I Nate just had the exact same expression I just had. What is we, that? We both know what that expression means. Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Hmm. I don't know what the hell that means. Uh, Hold on. Okay. Oh, I got a 22. I got a nat 20 on it. All right. Give me a second acrobatics check. Oh, hell. <laughs> 12. You stumble um of course i do but you don't fall and i oh. need one more acrobatics check the dc is more difficult because you're off balance now <laughs> <laughs> rolled a one for you out there rolled you a one fall uh, and take five bludgeoning damage as you are struck by the chain oh man Right before Ewok tried to destroy the metal. <laughs> metal. <laughs> but he wasn't able to defeat the metal. <laughs> Struck him to the ground. All right. Oh. Who's next? Angel's oh, crawling away. I am. I am. I'm going to go next. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm confident in my ability to beat this chain, but I do not have the tools required to do it. So... Give me an acrobatics check. Fuck that chain. 14. <laughs> that is a pass. Give me a second acrobatics check. Oh, fuck you. 18. All right. Give me a third and final acrobatics check. 18. Hey. <laughs> confident. I have a negative one <laughs> to my stat. You just need to wow. be confident about it. Yeah. I was just confident. That's yeah. what it is. All right, Yonk. Uh, Azir still looks kind of annoyed that you did that so easily. All right, all right, you you next. Get over here. All right, my three athlete uh, three athletics checks in a row, or, or sorry, acrobatics checks in a row. Uh, Eighteen, mm -hmm. nine, and twenty one. Hey. All right. Uh, so you stumble on the second one, but you're able to continue yeah. kind of jumping. Um, at the end of it. D'Angelo is just laying in the grass. <laughs> uh, she kind of alabaster skin is now scarred in crimson blood. <laughs> we should go back swimming again, Mr. D'Angelo. I heard that was really good for your skin. All right. Oh, that's gonna hurt. All right. <laughs> I guarantee that water has salt or something <laughs> in it. She'll It'll be um, my punishment for accepting this. She has like a little little fanny pack and she'll take out a um potion and toss it to Yonk. All right, there you go. Pretty nice. Hey, um what 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 does it do? It's a uh, potion of giant strength, hill giant. Ooh. Why the hell would I want that? This was a waste. Hey, are you strong enough to beat this thing that requires you to have high strength? <laughs> if you do, here's a potion <laughs> that'll give you strength. Yeah, She'll look down at D'Angelo and say, if you um want to work on this, and she'll just kind of point, like, like point at you, <laughs> like your entire body. <sighs> like, you know, we have treatments here at the, the temple that could help you. 
Will the treatment kill me? No. Then it won't help with this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she looks back at the two halfling women who look like they're sort of angrily whispering back and forth to each other, like they're in an argument in public, but they don't want anyone to know they're in an argument. She's like, all right, back to the jumping jacks. Let's go. Let's go. I will cast comprehend languages just to hear the bullshit you two are talking if you don't stop. <laughs> I'm gonna speak common or uh, halflings. Uh, I wanna, I wanna. Before they get started, I'm gonna put my hand on either of their shoulders. They're so much smaller than you. <laughs> yeah, dwarf. And they kind of jump. Did you see a dwarf? Um, I saw a dwarf a few days ago. And Zerza says, "Hey, no talking. We have to work." Your endorphins are going to crash. Let's go jumping jacks. And then they're back to doing jumping jacks. They can talk while they do jumping jacks. They are out of breath, like, <laughs> immediately. Like, she has clearly been, like, sort of like a drill sergeant, just, like, running them through exercises probably all morning. So they did see a dwarf a couple days ago. Where was he? You can talk to them later. We're trying to have an exercise program right now. I am getting very pissed off at this lady. <laughs> please, please do something. <clears throat> we can talk now. Uh, one of them sort of like in between her jumping jacks will be like, a couple days ago, I haven't seen him since. Where? Dining room. Thank you. Perhaps it's time that we got something to eat. Ah, I worked up an appetite for sure. Come on, Mr. D'Angelo. We'll see if we can get you some ice cream. That'll help. Ice cream always and makes things feel better. As we walk I, away, I'm going to look back at the lady and go. <laughs> <laughs> I cast mending on my clothes. She uh, she looks at you like growling at her and she just winks back at you. Got a real Hotel California vibe going on. Oh, this is yeah. bye, Mrs. Zirsa. Those were fun games. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, if you enjoy death. <laughs> so the three of you are going back into the lobby and then going into the dining room. Yep. All sweaty and nasty going into the dining yep. room. Um, large cushion chairs are set around this open space. Calming music fills the air, which carries a floral scent. A bar takes up one corner of the room alongside shelves of expensive wines and spirits and baskets of fresh fruit. Two tables stand along one wall um, to the north, each set up as a manicure and pedicure station with nail files, clippers, and bottles of nail, nail varnish. Um, there's a couple of people here. It looks like they have, um, like... Kind of matching polos. They look like they're staff here. Hmm. And, so, uh, so like, is it like restaurant style service, or is it cafeteria style service here in the dining room? Or how does yeah, is it a Piccadilly? Um. Well, there's one behind the bar, and you can see there's like a little menu kind of listed hmm. at the bar. Okay. Young. Wanna... Oh, shout when we go into the room. <laughs> We're looking for a dwarf. Uh, one of them holds out a menu. I I just kind of bypass the menu. I go straight up to him. I'm like, <laughs> I want a hamburger. No, I want a cheeseburger. I want a You'll hot You'll get dog. nothing in your life. <laughs> uh, we'll say uh, Joel Axel is there as well. He's seated at uh, one of the tables. He's um, having having a meal. Uh, um, no, uh, I'll I'll find a seat and I'll take a menu and I'll start to uh, I'll start to decide what table sized meal I'm about to have. The uh, the wait person is just sort of nodding and writing down what you're ordering. Okay, uh, one of everything. Over at D'Angelo and Kuma. Dwarf. They shake their head. Have you seen a dwarf? They shake their head and hold up the menu. 
I take the menu out of their hand and push it down, and I'm safe. I am looking for a dwarf, and you are going to help me find him. Or we'll be having people looking for someone else. They sort of shrug at you and point at the menu. I look at the menu. It's a list of food available for purchase. Is there a dwarf on the menu? No. I'm going to grab the guy by the collar. The waiter. Okay. And I'm going to drag them back to the kitchen where the wait- where the, the cooks are. Okay, so the door to the kitchen is behind the bar. Okay. Okay. Um, this kitchen has long counters and numerous shelves full of pots, pans, and utensils. Metal racks stuffed with herbs, flowers, fruits, and vegetables hang from the ceiling. Um, also, within the kitchen, there is a... Uh, a female wood elf. Um, she wears a delicate white veil across her eyes. Um, also in the room is a um, a large dog. It looks like maybe a mastiff or something like that. Um, the elf is she's like very rosy cheeked. She has green hair. Um, you can see like through the veil, her eyes look very like like milky. Um, she kind of turns and looks in the direction of, of where you're coming in. Blind. She goes, hello. I want to stay quiet for a moment. Uh, the, the dog was sort of like relaxing in a corner and it stands up and sort of moves its body between you and the, the elf. I'm going to kneel down his animal handling. Okay. Oh, God. It's a nine. I have a plus six. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, it looks at you with these sort of, like, bloodshot eyes. It has, like, the kind of saggy, like, big dog face, you know, that, that Mastiffs have. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't seem to be any more relaxed. It makes, like, a little, like, woof noise at you. Calm, friend. The woman, the, the elf, reaches out her hand and, and pats the dog. She goes, it's okay, Morty. Can I, uh, can I help you? Morty, 100 years, Morty, you and me. <laughs> We're going to work in the kitchen, Morty. Sorry. Uh, I'm a turkey leg. <laughs> I'm a turkey leg. Uh, what did you say, dwarf. David? Is this Sister Ga uh, Gariel? It's not Sister Garely, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking for a dwarf? Someone uh, that we... No, from work. And I'm mm. just going to kind of like roll my eyes a little bit. <laughs> it's gone missing. We're looking for them. This oh. was their last location that they were seen. Hmm. Well, you're certainly welcome to stay for a few days and, and see if you can find anything out about them. I, I'm not sure if we've had any dwarves. One of the other guests said you'd seen, or that they had seen a dwarf in here. In the kitchen? A few days ago, in this dining room. Uh, well, all of our guests eat in the dining room. So you're saying he was a guest? If they saw him here, then yes. Where would we go to find a list of people who are attending this place? The temple? Well, oh, this is a spa. This is a temple dedicated to Sunni. Um, and its dedication um, is focused on helping others heal and improve themselves. I'm. Um, I feel damaged. I would like to improve myself. I would like to improve myself by finding a dwarf and finding success in my mission. <laughs> That's. A wonderful goal, dear. Perhaps you could aid in it. I am happy to help you as much as I can, but... And then she'll sort of gesture towards, like, her eyes and the veil. I mean, there's there's only so much that I know. Have you heard a dwarf? I don't His know. His name is... 
I, I'm gonna like snap my fingers <laughs> over at Yonk. I didn't come in the kitchen with you, so no, no. But <laughs> it's this is, I'm behind the bar now, so you can see into the. Kitchen oh, area. oh, uh, his name is Falthrax. 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 He he's a mm. dwarf. He works at our library. He 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 puts the books back on the shelf, and he was sad. And well, we I I would have to ask my uh, my business partners. How many business partners do you have? Well, it's the three of us. My name uh, is Green Song. Uh, there's uh, Azir Song. Silver Silvery. Ugh. <laughs> Uh, I'm Greensong, uh, Azirsa, and Morgana. We we run the temple. I'm you can edit this out. You can edit this out. <laughs> These are fucking hacks, right? <laughs> There's three of them. One of them is named Morgana. Come on. Yeah, yeah, no, dude. I'm already like, <laughs> fuck. Come on. Can We're we just, fuck. like, add, look, player knowledge, granted, you clipped this whole part out. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. But I'm right. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> oh, the fucking the rule of threes and fucking. Dude. <laughs> like, <clears throat> since we're clipping this part, like, play uh-huh. it yeah. Any any time, it's a anything that does Sunni, just fucking run. <laughs> like, if you have any common sense in D and D, just fucking run every time. <laughs> I just, I don't know. Mm-hmm. My character is not a violent, evil person. He's a violent, Uh friendly person who is a lawful, (laughs) good, aligned character. Mm -hmm. Uh So, like, violence in our culture, in in Leonin culture, is, like, it's like they're like Klingons, which is why I played it. Yeah. (laughs) I was like, this guy's going to be up in people's shit. And Mm -hmm. then when they, like, bow back at him, he's like, (laughs) like, he's excited that Um, they're, like, you know. Yeah. My problem is, is that these people are a bunch of fucking pacifist bitch asses walking around this place like I already know about the menu I'm like you're about to I like I, I won't kill them I won't uh. kill them because they're impeding me why don't they talk I'm gonna like lift him up I'm sorry this guy mm-hmm. he doesn't talk no it's um it's part of their self-improvement. Some folks on staff don't talk. Right. And you like helping people. Yes. Insight? <laughs> okay, give me an insight. I'm rolling so bad, it's like fucking mind-blowing to me. <laughs> I have a plus six, and I rolled a one. <laughs> if you're looking for someone on staff to talk to... um Ilmar, our massage therapist. Ilmar. Ilmar. Oh. I was like, I don't want to talk to Bill. No one wants to talk to Bill Mar. <laughs> Bill Mar's got like six people watching him right now. <laughs> Three of them are guests. <laughs> the fucking cameraman's watching fucking Stephen Colbert. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. All right. Like I said, you're. You and your friends are are welcome to stay and enjoy the amenities of the temple. If there's anything that I or my partners can help you work on to improve yourselves, we would be happy to do that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to look at the dog. It looks back, back at you. <laughs> uh, pet him. He watches you suspiciously. Why don't roll another animal handling? It's okay. Been a minute. All right. Oh, you can't! It's like it's doing it intentionally. <laughs> it was on a fucking eleven, which would have been plus six, which would have been a seventeen, but it didn't. It rolled to a four. Yep. Ten. <laughs> uh, there doesn't seem to be a, a change in the dog's demeanor. I don't even think this is a fucking dog. <laughs> I have a dog too. You're rolling oh, intelligence check. No, I mean, all right. Man, Yonk's just afraid he's not going to get his hamburger and cheeseburger and hot dog. There's a blind lady cooking. You don't know what you're going to get. <laughs> also, I wouldn't eat it. <laughs> yeah, no.
Thanks for stopping in and listening to Candle Keepers by the Freelance Heroism Podcast crew. And uh, we hope that next week you'll come back and listen to some more. Yeah. Meanwhile, you can... You can check us out on our Patreon. We're at patreon.com forward slash freelance underscore heroism. Donate if you'd like to help us make uh, more episodes like this. Yeah. Or episodes like something else. (laughs) And Rachel, tagline? Return your library books on time. Do it. Or else you'll be in trouble. (laughs) Or else. Or else. Doo doo blasters. (laughs) (laughs) They're the most delicious. Well, I hope you're gushers, but with poop in them. I hope you're having fun despite me separating you from your horse and your armor. I'm not having a bad time. Thanks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I'm having a good time. Okay, good. I didn't think I was going to see Jarlaxle's dick today, but there we are. (laughs) <laughs> the same. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Who'd have to have two doves tattoo on? <laughs> Not weird. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Oh. We got a, a tribal barbed wire tattoo around it. You know them, Gerald, man. They're (laughs) strange.